Tens of thousands of people in western Washington and southwestern British Columbia felt a magnitude 4.5 earthquake that originated at the southeast side of Orcas Island. So this is the third earthquake in the last two weeks here in western Washington. And joining us to continue the conversation is meteorologist George Waldenberger, back from vacation, a little mm -hmm. more tan this morning from oh, Florida. Right? <laughs> yes, he is. And a haircut, too, I should add. Yeah. Look at good, George. So, George, Thank we've you. had uh, heard of all heard of an earthquake, but, but dig a little deeper for us on this. How does an earthquake happen, mm -hmm. uh, and why are they more common along the west coast yeah great question and i have a perfect graphic to kind of show you but imagine the earth right a globe and it's actually divvied up into layers the outer layer is called the crust okay so we live on top of the crust it's about maybe 20 kilometers thick and the earth's cut crust think of it as like a shell on the outer surface of the earth it's divided into a bunch of different plates tectonic plates and these plates they're all rigid but they all move with respect to each other but they're not constantly moving. They build up pressure. Then every once in a while, they'll move. That will send out vibrations throughout the crust, and those vibrations are what we call earthquakes. So the purple lines here on this spinning globe, the northern hemisphere at least, those represent the fault zones. In other words, the boundaries between the different plates. Now, the dots are showing you recent earthquakes in the last 10 days, so you can clearly see that there is uh, a correlation between where those dots are located for the most part and the boundaries of the plates are these fault zones. So if we watch the globe spin just a little bit more, and again, follow these purple lines, you'll notice uh, what we call the ring of fire. There it is. Uh, basically, the east coast of Asia wrapping around Alaska and the west coast of the United States, an active fault zone. And so we're on the west coast of the United States on that ring of fire. And so that puts us in the vicinity of earthquakes. And uh, just to kind of highlight this, I've zoomed into the Pacific Northwest. So you can see Washington, Oregon, and Northern California there. Uh, this is a map from the U.S. Geological Survey, and it highlights the vulnerability or the risk of earthquakes by region. So not only the threat of an earthquake, as which would be den denoted by the the hotter or the more red colors, but when you add a high concentration of people living in an area, then the risk or the vulnerability goes up because there's a lot more infrastructure that faces the chance of damage by those vibrations. So if you look closely, Seattle, Tacoma, there is a very, very deep shade of purple indicating our vulnerability is high to earthquakes here in western Washington. As a matter of fact, it's second only to parts of California in the country, our risk of earthquakes. And now I told you earlier that uh, the these plates uh, in, in the crust of the earth all kind of move with respect to each other and the movement causes vibrations which triggers which are earthquakes but they're not just moving along each other they're actually also moving underneath one another so this is a map of Washington and Oregon and kind of a cross section at the bottom so you can kind of see if you were to able or if you were able to look within the earth's surface and uh, what you actually have on the west coast of Washington is the Juan de Fuca plate, again, one of these plates that we've been talking about, actually going underneath the North American plate, the continent that we live. And so as this happens, this generates one of the three types of earthquakes we have here in Western Washington, the Cascadia subduction fault quakes. And then uh, as that plate goes a little bit farther or deeper underneath the North American plate, it bends and the, those cracks can also uh, cause deep slab earthquakes and then also shallow crustal faults. It's basically all of these movements can trigger other cracks in the earth at much shallower depths and uh, those can also trigger earthquakes which is the type of earthquake that we had recently on Orcas Island or just nearby so it's these three types of earthquakes that put us at a very vulnerable risk of earthquake activity and damage here in western Washington. Kind of interesting, don't you guys think? Absolutely, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. interesting, George. And, and now that we talked about significant damage, let's get more into that, mm -hmm. uh, the aftermath of an earthquake. How can they trigger tsunamis? And can an earthquake strike in the same place twice? Yeah, Tyra, second question first. Yes, it can, okay, and they do. Uh, it's anywhere the movement is the center of the movement happens, okay? So that movement can happen centered along the same place between two faults. 
once again. Uh, as far as tsunamis, they generally happen when you have stronger earthquakes beneath the ocean crust. This was a 4.5. I think generally maybe a 7 or an 8 would be more likely to create a tsunami. But uh, this, I know it's kind of a lot here, uh, but uh, breaking down the three types of earthquakes that I showed you, the deep earthquakes, the Cascadia subduction fault earthquakes, and the shallow uh, crustal fault earthquakes, the one that's most likely to happen and the one that I've talked to geologists and they were most worried about widespread damage would be a deep slab earthquake. So the ones that are very deep underneath the uh, ground below us, that was similar to the Nisqually quake in 2001. And uh, there's apparently about an 85% chance of this happening again in the next 50 years. So that's the type of earthquake we'll be watching over the next 50 years and beyond. Uh, the other ones as well, but this one has a higher likelihood of creating damage. Yeah, the so-called big one. I hope I'm not around when that one yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. This can be devastating around here. So let's talk about the forecast yeah. now. And what are you tracking this week? More rain? Okay, rain today. Okay. Then pretty quiet the rest of the week. Okay. Okay, not a bad Good. deal because we need the rain. As far as our rainfall forecast, and this is going through the morning and into the afternoon, some areas around Bellingham, Seattle may see around a quarter of an inch. I think a lot of areas will see less than that though, maybe down to a tenth of an inch or less, which is a shame because we actually need almost five inches of rain just to catch up to what would be considered normal for this year. Get higher amounts as you head toward the uh, foothills of the rainforest and the foothills of the Olympic Mountains. So it's not going to be a ton of rain, but we'll get what we get because that's all we're going to get. We'll also get maybe a couple inches of mountain snow today and tonight. Now tomorrow we'll be drying out. There may be a stray sprinkle. Thursday and Friday, nice and quiet weather. So good for doing those outdoor chores. The weekend also looks like it's going to start out mainly dry, although I'll watch the Olympic Peninsula on Saturday in case we get any showers. Then on Sunday, we'll have a better chance for rain. So I can kind of walk you through this. There's that first wave of rain today. Again, mainly late morning this afternoon. It looks wet. Then the drive home this evening, we have scattered showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder. Now, tomorrow's mainly dry, but not completely. You can see a few little areas of green there. So a stray sprinkle or light shower possible tomorrow. But I think we see a good amount of sun for Thursday. Friday, the clouds build back. And then there it is, Saturday. You can see we have another weather maker. This looks like it's going to be an atmospheric river event, but maybe not centered uh, for us, but over Vancouver Island. And then a higher chance that some of that rain arrives by Sunday night. Okay, so plan accordingly, Tyra and Steve. All right, George, we will plan. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's going to get wet, so just prepare for that. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had a nice dry streak around here. Mm -hmm. We did. Yeah. We so did George in Florida. Yeah, so did George. Oh, yeah. And then you brought rain to us. Thanks, George. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> that fake spring is long gone. Long gone and bring on the rain. But, yeah, no, good to hear that in-depth explanation yeah. about um, earthquakes and the different types and also uh, the impact. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people felt that one in the North Sound yesterday, that 4.5 magnitude near Orcas Island. Yeah. And there's always this concern about this, this big one coming. Um, and when it does, that sucker's gonna cause some widespread damage, I'm sure.